Hello everybody, and welcome back. Um, tonight we are going to be autopsying this, oops, this little disco lamp that I picked up at Rona. Um, and I'm sad that it's going to be an autopsy because I really wanted to show you guys that, I wonder if I can still coax it into working. Yeah, I can kind of get it working. Where if you twist it, the LEDs light up. Um, and that means that the motor, which has either gone bad, or I'm really hoping it's just a matter of it needing lubrication, but it also means that the motor, uh, to get it to spin, they've uh, just shorted it across, or not shorted, but they've um, soldered it across the terminals of uh, one of the LEDs, and when you twist it in one direction, it pushes uh, voltage through the one color of LED, the green one, and when you twist it in the other direction it pushes voltage into the other two LEDs. Um, so that's kind of neat, but we're gonna find out why it stopped rotating, because that's actually why we're autopsying this tonight. Um, and my assumption is that the motor's gone bad. Um, I'm hoping it's a fairly generic motor so I can replace it. Uh, or maybe I'm super lucky and it'll just be that the uh, gears inside or the motor itself got um, clogged up with cat hair or just needs some uh, some lubrication. So hopefully it, it'll be that way and it'll be super easy to repair rather than just kind of easy to repair. But either way it should be kind of illuminating to take this apart. So let's get started. Um, I'm just going to open up my little kit here that I bought uh, for such activities and we'll start by removing this little um, this little uh, oops my ratchet is going in the wrong direction the little lens here that causes the um, little LED the lights from the LED to spin around and make neat pattern oops and make near neat patterns. Uh, there's a little washer in there, a little lock washer to hold the, uh, the plastic lens here. So we'll start with that and we're gonna look in here and it looks like we've got um, three little well, probably one watt LEDs. I, I really wish I had the, uh, what's this, three watts right there, 50 millimeters. So it's either three one watt 50 millimeter LEDs or three three watt 50 millimeter LEDs. Um, I don't have the equipment necessary to actually take any uh, current readings off of these kinds of things just yet, um, but hopefully I'll be able to have some of that in the future and we'll be able to take readings off of things like this. Um, so I can see here that we've got some sort of silicone squishy goo that's probably holding this uh, this board to the plastic there. So hopefully it won't be necessary to remove that. I don't want to destroy this in order to take it apart. Um, so I guess the next step is going to be to try to take, because this looks like it's just a friction clip. So let's see if we can get this part off. Um, I'm going to use a spudger for that. Eh. I probably should have had these all removed and ready to go uh, before the video. So we're going to just use this spudger, try to see if we can... Oh, oh that was uh, mildly promising. Let's uh, try that again. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Ooh, that's tight. Alrighty, so we'll just take that and lay it off to the side. Now we've got a slightly better view of the LEDs there, but uh, nothing too much very revealing as to the, the innards of this. Um, so let's continue. We'll see if we can... Ow! So that, that happens. Um, thankfully the edge on this isn't... I mean, it's slightly sharp, but it wasn't sharp enough to cut me. Uh, let's 
let's continue seeing about sputtering this. I don't think... Looks like there's a little gap there. Let's try that. Oh. Ah, there we go. And off it comes. So, let's see what we've got going inside there. See if I can remove it fairly easily. Oh, it looks like there's a... Ooh. This actually looks like it's got a proper LED driver. That'll be interesting to, uh, to take apart there. Um, but it also looks like this might be either kind of neat and be actually something that I can remove. I might need a sharper implement, however. Yeah, I think I'm going to need... Uh, an exacto blade <coughs> uh, in order to pull that off but this might also be able to come off here but that's not going to come off without a sharp implement maybe this screwdriver will be sharp enough to get up under there I should have probably gone time lapse for the actual deconstruction part of this but uh, this time I'm going to make you guys suffer through my inane chatter as I try to uh, puzzle through the disassembly process here. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to take that apart without actually destroying it. So I think that I'm just going to leave that be for the moment. Let's see. But yeah, now that I have access to the actual thing and can give it a proper turn, you can see uh, that is a very bright LED. Ow. Um, you can see that if I rotate it in this direction, I get red and blue lighting up. If I rotate it in this direction, I get the green lighting up. And you can see on this side, we've got the red and blue wires for the motor coming up and going across the terminals with the red LED which makes sense that when we turn it in the one direction or the, sorry oh the circuit board lies so that says g1 that says b1 that one says r1 i would run the assumption that that would be the red led that would be the green led and that would be the blue led but we can see that the red led is in the blue led position the green or the blue led is in the green led position and the red LED is in the green LED position. And that actually gives me a theory as to potentially why this motor went bad. But let's continue the disassembly process here and see what else we can learn. Um, this is actually pretty, pretty, uh, Pretty neat. I was expecting there to just be a simple capacitive dropper of some sort uh, in in the circuit here. You know, maybe some messily rectified DC, but uh, it looks like it's got a proper constant current driver, um, which is neat. Uh, we'll have to take that apart and see what's inside. It looks like it'll be fairly challenging because there's a big mess of silicone goop right there. So, uh, let's just, oh, oh, that's what those nuts were for. Okay. Let's, uh, carefully remove that. Ah, come on, you. Yeah. Ah! Boy, I'm just so professional at this, aren't I? Come on, get out. There we go. So there's that one off, and then we'll unscrew this one as well, keeping a finger on that nut so it doesn't go shooting off all over the table. That sounded vaguely dirty. Um, and we'll pull that screw out, there we go. And we'll carefully grab the nut and put it over here. And then, let's see. Okay, the 
that's kind of sort of a little bit stuck in by that silicone goop. Um, but there we go, there's the motor out. Let's see if we can learn anything here. Look, two. Oh, that's interesting. We've got some uh, sort of sticky, greasy goop. Um, boy, I'm really liking the word goop tonight. I will be right back. I'm just going to grab some paper towels here from the kitchen. Okay, and I'm back. So we're just going to wipe off that leakage there. And we need a... Oh, do we need a smaller screwdriver bit? Nope, this one will do. So we'll just unscrew that. And then we'll unscrew this one as well. Alright, and then hopefully that will... Okay, this looks like a good job for the spudger. Oh, there we go. You. Well, there's definitely some sort of lubricating gunk in there. Um, so that's a thing. But I'm becoming more and more convinced that the problem is actually in the motor and not the gears because they are, as you can see, very clearly uh, quite well lubricated for for this sort of activity here. So we're going to carefully tear this down a little bit further. Um, I'm going to move this paper towel over here because as these gears are all covered with gunk, um, I'm going to want somewhere to put them where they won't get goo everywhere. So I'm just going to use my tweezers here to carefully remove these. I'm going to try to orient them on the paper towel here in a similar fashion as to the way they are plugged in. Just like so. I'm not sure if that's even... I'm pretty sure that's on camera, so... You can see the, the four pins here are like that. I just I think I'm gonna flip these over just so I can remember for sure that they go like that. Alright, now we've got that we've got the screws that are holding the motor in exposed, so uh, let's quickly undo those. Oops. Oh, where did that go? Oh, there it is. I'll put these over here too, because they're covered in goop too. And we'll unscrew that. And also put it over here. Alright, and then this comes right off. And then we've got just this little motor exposed now. I'm gonna quickly try to wipe and the goop off the top of this motor now. And let's see. Let's see what we got going here. Okay, so I'm actually reasonably confident that it's not the motor because the motor itself is actually... I'm not feeling any sort of resistance from the motor. So I don't believe that's actually the problem. Um, I'm going to do something potentially a little foolish here. And yuck, that stuff is really very tenacious and gooey. Um, I'm actually seeing a mark there on the on the plastic here that may indicate to me where the problem actually is. But let's see uh, what's going on here. So I'm just going to grab this. This is a... Well, it actually shouldn't be a too bad idea. It seems like I'm isolated fairly reasonably well from the mains. 
Um, but we're just gonna put that in there. I'll point that away from my face because those LEDs are actually really quite bright. And we're gonna temporarily turn this on. Okay. Oop. Oh wow, those are really bright. Okay, so that's actually providing some really fascinating effects on the wall with the three colors of the light mixing. Anyway, so that motor is spinning along really quite happily. So I don't think anything is wrong with the motor, which means that something was wrong with the way these gears were interacting. Um, so I'm going to troubleshoot that a little bit further here. Ow. In a moment. Let's keep those LEDs out of the way. So, but we're going to start by seeing if we can get a look inside that LED driver without uh, having to destroy the whole thing. Now I'm just gonna ground those just in case there isn't a discharge resistor inside this um, inside this driver because uh, I don't want to light myself up with uh, any capacitors that might still have a charge inside it. Now it actually looks now that I'm looking closer at this, this board isn't actually held down by that silicone goo except for where it goes through to hold the LED driver down here. So let's see if we can carefully... Oh, that's a very unfriendly noise. Uh, see if we can carefully peel this up off of the silicone goop that it's got. Maybe another job for the spudger here. Let's see. Yeah, the spudger's getting under there fairly nicely. Of course, this is going to leave me with the challenge of how to reconnect. Ooh. Oh. How to reconnect the driver to the board once I'm done taking it apart, but, well, we'll burn that bridge if we need to. Um, so there's a oak oh, crunch. I hope that wasn't a bad noise. Let's continue levering this off, trying to get under there with the spudger and sort of cut the silicone sealant away from the board. We're actually doing fairly well here. I'm sure this is super exciting watching me uh, try to peel this box up out of the out of the lamp here. But we're almost through. Come on. Come on, you get off of board. There we go. Okay, there we go. Whew. That was uh, that was really challenging. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna quickly fire up my soldering iron here and disconnect the driver from the board. Should be fairly easy. The board is actually really well labeled. We got our plus and minus there on the leads coming in from the LED driver. Um, I'm still a little curious why they put the motor across the leads of the red LED. I'm gonna have to take some voltage readings because the motor is rated for 3.0 volts to 9 volts and a red LED typically illuminates at 1.8 to 2 volts. So that may also be the problem that the LED is being mounted. Oh wait, no, that's... Because we just discovered that that's not the red LED. That was, what was that, the green LED? Oops. Well, there's something I'm going to have to repair. Um. Huh. Did I do that? Well, I guess I'm going to have to fix that too. So we'll just desolder the motor while we're at it. Um, so the 
soldering iron is nice and heated up now. And I'll just quickly dab those. Those came off really easily. I'm wondering if they used lead bearing solder in this device. Oops. Oh, come on. Okay, so we're gonna take that off. And this little scrap of leftover wire, we'll just dab that with the solder iron. There we go. And then we'll scroll these out. And that's that taken apart. Now, let's see if we can open up this little box here and see what kind of circuitry we've got going in it. it looks like a yeah, it's just clipped closed with some friction clips, so that'll come open really easy with the uh, spudger here. And look at that, we've got a proper LED driver in here. That's um Open that up and have a closer look. Alrighty, so you got the mains coming in on this side, uh, going through a big honking resistor. Good lord. Um, no, that's an inductor, I believe. Red, white, gold, gold, black. Either that or black, gold, gold, white. Red, no, that doesn't make any sense. That's interesting. We're gonna have to look up inductor color codes because I believe that's an inductor. Um, you know, I'm going to uh, pause the video shortly while I quickly reverse engineer this a little bit. Um, and once I think I have it figured out, I'll come back and run you guys through what I learned. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. Um, and I have to say that I genuinely have absolutely no idea what's going on in this circuit. Um, I'm fairly sure this is an inductor, and we've got the mains coming in and going into... I, I, this has to be an inductor because it, the, the color bands don't match any resistor color code I've ever seen. Uh, and I think that makes it a 2.9 microhenry inductor, the way those color bands are set up. Um, my assumption would be that would be to potentially limit some inrush current as the, uh, the inductor has to build up its magnetic field before uh, it starts passing current pop, potentially. Um, no idea. Uh, they've got They've got some um, some anti-tracking slot here to keep uh, electricity from from jumping across these two uh, leads and potentially over these two because they made a little, little L-shape anti-tracking. Um, so that comes into uh, this little chip here. This is a, a packaged uh, bridge rectifier. So you're going to put AC in on this side, you've got the neutral on this side and the live on this side. That's interesting, the inductor is on the neutral side. I've got to do some asking around and try to figure out what this circuit does. Um, and then through the inductor, or the inductor, good lord, Chris, use the right terminology here. Through the bridge rectifier here, that's coming out of that side, uh, just inside the board there. One side of, let's see, the negative side of the bridge rectifier is coming into uh, I think it's this capacitor. That would make sense because uh, conventional current flow, that's where the electrons are coming from. So it's coming into that capacitor, which goes over into this inductor, and that, I know for sure that's an inductor because it's big and lumpy and, and seafoam green. Uh, and that's a 4700 microhenry uh, inductor. And that comes over into this diode there. 
Uh, and then also, no, that's not going into that diode. That's going into that side of the transformer. And the other side is going, the positive side of the rectified current is going into this capacitor, I believe, which probably charges up and activates this chip, which, beep, 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 what the heck just went beep, 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 over there. Oh, that was my uh, multimeter shutting off. Um, so this capacitor charges up, probably turns on this chip. This is some sort of LED driver chip. Uh, I was not able to find any da data sheets for it online, but it is labeled H7122DS. Uh, the only sites I could find anything about it were Chinese websites, and they didn't have data sheets on it. Uh, so that goes over into a pair of components that are underneath this transformer. I have no idea what happens after that, because in order to find out what those components are, I'd have to take off the, the transformer, and that's just getting way beyond anything I'd ever want to try to do. Um, and then whatever's happening on this side, th this is, I'm very confused about this because it looks like all of the rectification is happening on this side and then we've got direct current going into the transformer and you don't put direct current into the transformer. So I'm imagining that this chip is probably turning, allowing flow to pulse into the transformer and, and causing a pulsing electrical field, which would then be able to send current into the secondary windings. The secondary windings come through this rectification diode here. Um, that's just a I didn't look up ES1D, but it's a diode. Um, and then also through this capacitor, which I think is probably some sort of smoothing capacitor. And this, which I believe is another isolation capacitor of some sort, probably from the feedback winding of the transformer, which allows this chip to power itself after, after the circuit charges up. And probably also allows it to monitor the current going into the LEDs and therefore controls the transformer as far as uh, how much current it's putting into the circuit. I think. that That's my theory on it. We've got an anti-tracking slot here as well to keep voltage from, from jumping back along the traces. Um, this circuit is way beyond my ken though. I, I I genuinely am quite baffled as to how this works. Uh, but it works quite well. This is a much more advanced circuit than I was expecting to go into this um, into this device, so it's much higher quality than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's also got these really nice, super flexible, squishy silicone sheathed wires rather than just the standard uh, PVC wires like these, um, so that's kind of neat, those uh, high quality wires. And the same with these being high quality silicone sheathed wires. So yeah, honestly, I, I'm, this is so far beyond my ken, I, I don't, I'm, I'm quite, quite baffled as to what this circuit does. Uh, so I'm going to go into time-lapse mode here, I'm going to put this all back together and uh, see if I can troubleshoot why this wasn't spinning nicely and then I'm going to put it back together. Um, so I'll see you guys in a short while after a brief time-lapse and uh, we'll see if I can get it turning again at least nicely um, and then I'll consult some experts as to how that, that driver circuit works. Thank <laughs> you.
so I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, I'm back just for the last little bit of the uh, reconstruction here. Um, just gonna use my, probably shouldn't be using this for this purpose, but these are originally spatulas for medical purposes, so I can use it as a spatula to spread some flux onto the circuit here. Um, just putting back together the last little bit here. Um, I redistributed some of the lubricant that uh, was inside the gearbox in the hopes that the rotation on this little lamp works a little bit better now. Um, so I'm just going to quickly re-solder everything here. Um, you've already seen most of that process uh, on the time lapse there. but. We're just going to finish up the last little bit and hopefully when we're done it'll work better. Let's see, so I need the black wire or the red wire to go here. Oh, I hope I wasn't off camera there for a second. So I'm just going to Solder this back on like so. Come on. Up, oh, Alex. That's really weird. That solder. There we go. It was not flowing onto the wire. I mean, it was flowing around it, but it wasn't actually flowing into it. There you go. Probably the aluminum core PCB was. Uh, causing me a bit of attitude. Anyway, so there we have it. Um, I'm just gonna push these wires back through. Now I didn't actually bother to re-glue the LED driver on the, the back of the little housing here. Um, it didn't seem like it was going to be overly important. The wires that it has attached to it are really quite robust and thick. So I kind of figure that, oops, that it will be able to handle rattling around in there. It's not like this is going to be shaking a great deal. Oh, for Pete's sake. <sighs> I knew this was going to be a hard part. Well, let's go about this a different and slightly smarter way put the screw through the lens, and then the washer on the lens, and then we'll start to screw that on like so, and once the threads have bitten, oops, oh hey, I forgot a step, I wonder how many of you are screaming at the screen, uh, telling me that I'd missed a part, so let's put this piece back on first, there we go, Click. Okay, oh, that's nice and tight. I have to say, I was rather pleased with how easily this came apart, at least. Um, little, little shamed that I couldn't tell you more about what the circuit was doing. Um, that just means I've got more learning, and I may re revisit this thing in the future once I've uh, gleaned a little more knowledge on how that whole circuit actually functions. Um, so whatever it does, it does it quite well. Um, hey, look at that. That's rotating quite nicely and easily now. Now you can see how the, the two LEDs light when I turn it in that direction and the green LEDs lights when I turn it in that direction. So just to show you guys what this thing looks like when it's actually working, um, we're going to screw it into my little off-screen lamp here and turn it on. And 
just for fun I'll kill that I mean then you can see the way the lights kind of dance around and look pretty so that's working again and that's happy so I guess this won't actually be going into my autopsy folder it'll be going into a new folder called repair I guess anyway um, thanks so much for joining me on this little exploratory surgery uh, if you liked the video let me know in the comments below share it with your friends and uh, maybe check out my patreon link which I'll throw into the description down there or I'll make an annotation right about here and you guys can help me out with uh, funding maybe some f future projects or uh, help me put some food in my fridge or something like that so um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.